Good morning all. In the previous couple of videos, we have been discussing the pile foundations. We started off with what piles are. We discussed a few applications of piles. We discussed a few classifications of piles. And we discussed that to arrive at the ultimate load capacity of a pile foundation, you have four different methods. One is a static method. Second can be the dynamic method. Third can be the in-situ penetration method. And the fourth can be, of course, the pile load test. Now, if we discuss briefly what static method of estimation of ultimate capacity is, we said that the pile can be end bearing and frictional. End bearing is when the pile rests on a hard strata, and frictional is when the pile does not rest on a hard strata but derives its strength from the circumferential friction or the cohesion. Now, based on which you, uh, we had discussed that QU, the ultimate load, is a sum of QP and QS. QP being the tip resistance or the end bearing, QS being the skin friction, which can be contributed by adhesion in clay or friction in sand. Now, based on the estimation, we will try to solve a few numerical problems, the simple ones. The first one is given on the screen. A concrete pile, 45 cm diameter and 15 meter long, is installed into a homogeneous clay layer of 50 kPa cohesion and an adhesion factor of 0.75. Water table is given at the ground level. We are asked to find the allowable load for a factor of safety of 2.5. Just a representation of this question, you have 15 meter long pile with a diameter of 0.45. Of course, it's a circular in shape, so it's diameter and it's given as 0.45. The water table is at the ground level like this. Now to arrive at the allowable load, you need to have the ultimate load, which is given by QU plus Q, QU equal to QP plus QS, where QP is a point of the tip resistance, which we have discussed as QPAP, and QS is a shaft resistance, FS into AS. Small letter QP is a bearing capacity of the soil, the pile tip, AP is the area of the pile tip, cross-sectional area. FS is the average unit skin friction in case of sand or adhesion along the shaft in place of clay. AS is a circumferential effective area of the pile shaft. This is the theory that we have discussed. We will try to apply that to this particular problem. QP, AP, FS, AS. Now to get QP, we said that the Tasagi's bearing capacity theory can be applied. But if you could recollect, the Tasagi's theory had three different terms. C and C plus gamma D of N Q plus half gamma B N gamma. So you can actually apply that theory but with a modification. This particular problem, the pile is installed in clay. So you just have cohesion factor there. And what you usually do in practice is to estimate QP as C and C. You avoid the other two terms, which is trailing C and C, which are half gamma B and gamma and Q and Q. In case of clay, NC for deep foundations is taken as nine. This again is a usual practice based on experience and theory where NC is nine. So in this particular question, you can estimate QP to be equal to 50 into 9, where 50 is the cohesion given and 9 is the NC given or taken. So, small letter QP in kilopascal has a value of 450 kilopascals. AP, of course, is the area of the pile tip, which is pi by 4D square since it's a circular cross section, where D, the diameter, is already given the question, so you can get AP in meter square. So that takes care of the capital QP term or the end resistance or the tip resistance. Now FS, we know that for clay, FS is alpha into C where alpha is adhesion factor already given as 0 0.75 in the question and cohesion C is given as 50 kilopascal. So you multiply alpha with C and what you get is uh, the FS factor. AS is a circumferential area. You have a cylindrical circle circumference here, which is of a diameter 0.45 meter and a length 15 meters. So AS turns out to be 
21.19 meter square pi into d into l so now you have every terms listed out here to have this solved you apply these values in the equation q u equal to q p plus q s and the ultimate load that you get is around 866.36 of course like every time i would like you to solve this on your own and just cross check if you are arriving at the same answer of course with the tolerance and the decimal places but nonetheless just try to see if you're getting an answer of 865 to 868 kilonewtons now this is just the ultimate load you need the allowable load so you divide it by the factor of safety 2.5 is a factor of safety you are recommended in the question even if the factor of safety is not recommended in the question you can take it as 2.5 because in usual geotechnical practices the factor of safety that you take is 2.5 or in some cases when the soil properties are quite uncertain you uh, you use a factor of safety of even 3 uh, against a factor of safety of 1.5 that we use for concrete because concrete is something that is homogeneous to a certain extent and we can actually estimate the properties but soil is not of the nature it's quite unpredictable so it's to a certain extent so we use a factor of safety of at least 2.5 and at times 3. Anyways, so when you give a factor of safety of 2.5, the safe capacity that you get is 346 kilonewton. So this is one of the simplest questions that you can expect with a direct application of the static equation. We'll move to the next question. You have a concrete pile, almost of the same dimension, not precisely the same dimension now, 45 centimeter diameter is installed up to 15 meter depth but not in clay in sand the unit weight is given 17.5 kilo newton per meter cube angle of internal friction is 30 degrees lateral earth pressure coefficient is 1.5 you're asked to take the delta the interface angle as 75 percent of internal friction phi or delta is equal to 0 0.75 phi you're asked to calculate the allowable load, quite similar to the previous question, with a factor of safety of 2.5, neglecting n gamma and assuming nq at 16.5. So in the previous question, we didn't take nq, we didn't take n gamma because it was pure clay. In this particular question, it's pure sand, so you can avoid any term that has c. So the first term c and c gets cancelled out, and you're asked to neglect n gamma. So all you have to do is to take nq term. And NQ is already given the question as 16.5. Step number one, just quite similar to the previous question, QU is equal to QP plus QS. Where QP is a point of the tip resistance, and given as QPAP. QS is a shaft resistance, F is into AS. AP is the same value because you have the same pile here, and AS is again the same value because you say you have the same uh, geometry qp small qp is gamma d of nq here because c and c cancels out and half gamma b and gamma term also cancels out so what remains is gamma d of nq is equal to 17.5 gamma d of is 15 nq is 16.5 so you get the value of QP there and to get FS you have K sigma V tan delta at the mid height of the soil strata because K is given sigma V increases linearly with depth. So what you do is you take the average which is at the mid depth. So you take sigma V is equal to gamma into L by 2. L is 15 meters, you take the sigma v at the mid depth because you have zero sigma v at the top and maximum sigma v at the bottom. So to be fair with the question, you take the the uh, the sigma v at the mid depth, which is gamma into L by 2, uh, which turns out to have a value of 131.75 kilopascal. And k is already given in the question directly as 1.5. Lateral air pressure coefficient is 1.5. Sigma V is 131. Now we need tan delta for which you are given delta as 0 0.75 phi. Phi is already given as 30 degrees. So tan delta is equal to tan 
0 0.75 into 30. So now you have every term listed out. You can solve and substitute that in the equation. So you have QP here, you have AP here, you have FS here, you have AS here. So solving that, you get QU, the ultimate load, 2424 kilonewtons. And just remember that is the ultimate load. You need to apply the factor of safety, which is 2.5 already given in the question. Applying that, you get allowable load as 969 kilonewton. Try to solve it on your own and just try to see if you are getting a similar answer.